All right, we're on to chapter eight, section five, and we're going to be looking at drawing Lewis structures. Um, and so uh, th this uh, section gets a little bit involved. We do a lot of Lewis structures. So um, there's a couple of things that you'll want to print out uh, before and the things you should print out. Well, obviously you have the in-class assignment printed out, but also there's this page that's Lewis structures of molecules and polyatomic ions. I would encourage you to print that out because uh, we're going to use that and it's got little footnotes at the bottom and this is a handy thing to reference while you're while you're working on these problems all right so we're going to go back over here and we are going to look at uh, doing Lewis structures now I will point out that the way that I do the Lewis structure is a little bit different than the way that the textbook does it and um, you can do it either way um, but I think the way that I do it gives you some extra information that is quite useful. So the very first thing is you want to draw a backbone structure. That is, you want to get all of the atoms and have a, you know, get it into the right orientation, so the right uh, connectivity, and then put the minimum number of bonds to connect those atoms. If we're looking at F2, we just have two atoms, we're gonna put a single bond in between the two fluorine atoms. And we'll determine if that's gonna stay a single bond or if it's gonna be a multiple bond. We'll determine it by going through a little bit of some very simple math. If you have more than two elements, you'll want to put the least electronegative element in the center, unless that least electronegative element is hydrogen. We'll talk about those when we get to those uh, exceptions. The second thing we want to do is to count the valence electrons. Now at this point, hopefully you know that fluorine is in group seven. It is a halogen, so you can go look at your periodic table. It's element number nine, it's in group seven. Uh, and so we've got seven plus seven or seven times two, that gives us 14 valence electrons. Okay, all right, so 14 valence electrons. All right, now we want to add up octets and duets. So octets and duets. Well, octet uh, electrons and duet electrons, these are the number of electrons we would have if we didn't share any electrons. If every atom could have its own octet, uh, in, in, or if it's hydrogen can have its own duet, then how many electrons would that take? And we're just gonna call that octet electrons. So add up the octets and duets to get the total possible number of octet electrons. Well, uh, fluorine can have up to eight and the other fluorine can have up to eight. And so that would give us a total of 16 octet electrons. Now we don't have 16 electrons. We only have 14 valence electrons to work with. So we're gonna take the difference between the octet electrons and the valence electrons and that will give us the number of shared electrons. And in this case, our number of shared electrons is gonna be two. So 16 minus 14 gives us two shared electrons. Well, with two shared electrons, right, with two shared electrons, um, we're gonna take that number and divide by two to give us the number of bonds. So we're gonna have one bond in this molecule. This little trick, this little math trick that I just showed you, it works for 99% of Lewis structures. It doesn't work for everything, and I'll show you examples of when that doesn't work, but I'm gonna show you more examples of when it works first. All right, so we subtract the valence, we got that, we got the shared, and then we divide by two to get the number of bonds. All right, and so now we're gonna take, uh, um, now we're going to do our next step, which is, draw any additional bonds. Now we only had one bond and there was there's one bond already drawn so we don't need to draw an additional bond. Um, so it's the if necessary part here. And then six, use any remaining electrons as lone pairs to satisfy octets of each atom. And then start with perimeter atoms first. In this case that doesn't really matter but uh, um, so we're gonna put, um, we, we have 14 valence electrons and we've used two of them and since we've used two of them, that means we have 12 electrons remaining. 
Well, we can put uh, six electrons around each fluorine. That will give this fluorine two, four, six, eight electrons around it. This fluorine has two, four, six, eight. Both of those have a full octet. This is our valid Lewis structure for fluorine. All right, now a few quick rules to remember when you're doing Lewis structures before we move on and actually practice these is one, hydrogen can't go in the middle. So hydrogen can have one bond going to it and that's it. So it, it cannot have two bonds, so therefore it cannot be in the middle. So hydrogen will always be on the perimeter. It also, uh, when we do octet electrons, it's going to have two instead of eight. So here are a couple of examples of hydrogen not in the middle, okay? All right, our period two elements like carbon, uh, uh, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, they can never have more than an octet, absolutely positively. Now, there's that means there's some things that can have more than an octet. We'll get to those exceptions a little bit later. But uh, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine, they can never have more than an octet. And then when given the choice, um, if you're not sure where to put the atoms, put your hydrogen atoms on the less electronegative atoms first and put uh, lone pairs on the more electronegative atoms first. I'll show you those examples in a bit. So let's look at 41. Uh, uh, you're probably getting, uh, um, getting sick of uh, looking at this. So let's look at 41. We'll come over here. I've got our handy dandy periodic table to look at. And we'll just start with this. So our first step, and, and I'm going to put this right here so we can refer to it. First thing, draw the backbone structure. So we've got oxygen here. So we'll put oxygen, oxygen. That's our backbone. All right, count the valence electrons. Well, oxygen is in group six. So there it is in group six. There's two of them, so two times uh, six is uh, is uh, 12 electrons. My, my brain stopped there for a second. So there's 12 valence electrons to work with. Octet electrons, if each oxygen could have a full octet and not have to have a bond, we could have eight and eight. Eight plus eight is 16. We don't have 16 electrons. We only have 12. So we now need to subtract the valence electrons from the octet electrons. That gives us four, and that's the number of shared electrons. The number of bonds is one half of that number. So in this case, that's going to be two. So we need to, uh, uh, step five is to draw the additional bond. So there we're going to draw that additional bond. So we now have two bonds between the two oxygens. And with the two bonds, that's two, four. We've used up four out of our 12 valence electrons. That means that we have eight valence electrons left. So we can put uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to finish that off. If you look, this oxygen has two, four, six, eight electrons around it. So it has a full octet. And this oxygen also has two, four, six, eight, so it has an octet. So that is our valid Lewis structure for O2. All right, now for nitrogen. Well, uh, again, nitrogen, we're going to do a backbone structure. So there's our backbone structure. Count the valence electrons. Nitrogen is in group five, and there's two of them, so that's 10 valence electrons to work with. Octet electrons, if this could have eight and this could have eight, eight and eight, that is 16. But we don't have 16, we only have 10. So we're going to have to share the difference between those. So that gives us six shared. Our number of bonds is going to be half of that number. So we'll have three bonds. So we're going to put a triple bond between the two nitrogens. So we'll put a triple bond between the two nitrogens. All right, so we've used six. You can see two, four, six. We've used six of our 10 valence electrons. We have four electrons remaining. Anytime you take uh, uh, the difference between the valence electrons and the shared, that's going to tell you how many lone pair electrons you're going to have. So we have four uh, uh, lone pair electrons. So we can put two onto this nitrogen and two onto this nitrogen. If we look, this nitrogen has two, four, six, eight valence electrons. This one has two, four, six, eight valence electrons. So that gives us a valid Lewis structure for nitrogen. All 
All right, carbon dioxide, we did this one a little bit earlier. So for carbon dioxide, um, it, you'll notice here it says put the least electronegative element in the center. Oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. So we're gonna have oxygen, carbon, oxygen. And that's our backbone structure. Counting valence electrons, well, carbon has four, oxygen has six, so six, four, and six, that gives us 16 valence electrons to work with. For octet electrons, if each one could have eight, that would be eight, eight, and eight, that's 24. But we don't have 24, we only have 16. So if we take the difference between that, 24 minus 16 gives us eight shared electrons. Well, eight shared electrons, uh, divide that number by two, and that will give us four bonds. So we have four bonds uh, um, that we can put in there. So there's already two that are drawn. We just need to put two more. Now, as you would guess, it makes sense to put uh, um, a double bond here and a double bond there. And you saw that earlier when we, we did that. Uh, I showed you that Lewis structure. We had double bonds there. So this makes sense. Uh, we'll talk about why it wouldn't make sense to do it the other way here in a little bit. So we've used eight of our 16 electrons. That means that we have eight electrons remaining as lone pairs. Some, sometimes you can just put like, oh, eight electrons as, as uh, lone pair electrons there. So eight electrons remaining as lone pairs. You'll notice that carbon already has eight electrons around it. So we're gonna put two, four, and that will fill up that octet for oxygen, six and eight, and you'll see that now each of the atoms has an octet. This oxygen has two, four, six, eight. This carbon has two, four, six, eight. And the oxygen has two, four, six, eight. So that is our valid Lewis structure for carbon dioxide. All right, next. All right, water is not very complicated. Now, as but I, I the reason I want to do the water here is because um, we want to put the least electronegative element in the center. And uh, I think that that will be, uh, um, and I also want to show you how to deal with the duets instead of octets. So there is HOH, we can't put hydrogen in the middle, so it has to be the oxygen. Count the valence electrons, one for each hydrogen, so that's two, and then six for the oxygen, that gives us a total of eight. Now for doing octet electrons, hydrogens don't get octets. Hydrogens get duets. So we're gonna do two, eight, and two. So two, eight, and two gives us 12. All right, so if hydrogen can have its own pair of electrons, oxygen can have its eight, and this hydrogen could have two, that two, eight, and two would be 12. But we don't have 12, we only have eight. So 12 minus eight gives us four, and that's two bonds. You'll notice that we've already got two bonds drawn. So we don't need to draw any additional bonds. So next, we want to look at uh, the number of lone pair electrons. So we've used four out of eight. That means we have four electrons remaining as lone pair electrons. And we're gonna put those four electrons onto the oxygen. We can't put them on hydrogen because hydrogen already has bonds. Hydrogen already has bonds. All right. That is our valid Lewis structure for water. So you'll see here, uh, hydrogen has its duet, this oxygen has two, four, six, eight, and this hydrogen has its duet. So that is our valid Lewis structure for oxygen. All right, C2H4. Well, clearly the carbons have to be bonded to each other because we can't have hydrogen in between. And also, it makes sense that we should put uh, we should put the same number of hydrogens on each carbon, unless we're given some other reason to do otherwise. All right, now I'm doing a little bit of foreshadowing for shape, so because you know, chapter nine, right around the corner. All right, so H, there's the carbons, there's the hydrogens. Uh, so count up valence electrons, right? So count valence electrons. So one, two, three, four, and then four and four. So eight plus four is 12 valence electrons. Octet electrons, well, if hydrogen can have two, 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 and two, that's eight. And this carbon can have eight, and that one have eight. So eight, eight, and eight gives us 24 octet electrons. We don't have 24, we only have 12. 
And that means we're going to have 12 shared electrons. Now, something interesting has happened here. When these two numbers are the same, that means that we're not going to have any lone pair electrons. We're going to have all bonding electrons. All right, half of 12 gives us six bonds. If we count the number of bonds, we've got two, four, six, or, or uh, one, two, three, four, five, and we need one more bond. And there's only one place that bond could go. And that's between the two carbons. So that's the only place that that bond can go is between the two carbons. And now if we look, uh, we'll see that each hydrogen has a bond, so each hydrogen is good. And this carbon has one, two, three, four bonds, so eight, eight electrons around it. This carbon has eight electrons around it. That is our valid Lewis structure for this molecule. And in case you're wondering what the name of this molecule is, is official name is ethene. So ethene. However, almost nobody ever calls it ethene. Almost everybody calls it ethylene. Oh, there it is, ethylene. I think only its mom calls it um, ethene. All right, next we've got C2H2. Well, clearly we're going to have to put the carbons connected together. And we only have two hydrogens, so let's put the hydrogens on either side. So there's the hydrogens on either side. And uh, and so now, so that that is our backbone structure. Let's count up valence electrons. So one, four, four, and one. That gives us 10. Octet electrons. Well, two, eight, eight, and two. So two, eight, eight, and two gives us 20. We don't have 20, we only have 10, so we're going to have 10 shared. You'll notice that means no lone pair electrons because these are the same number. And 10, that means 5 bonds, so half of that number tells us the number of bonds. You'll see that we've got 1, 2, 3 bonds already drawn, so we're going to put 2 more bonds, and the only place they can go is between the two carbons. So we're going to have a triple bond between those two carbons. All right, and if we check, each of the hydrogens has a bond, so those are good. And then the carbons each have four bonds, so that's eight electrons around each of those. So that is our valid Lewis structure for that. Again, the official name for this is called ethyne. E-T-H-Y-N-E, -E, my N got a little messed up there. But uh, hardly anybody ever calls it that. Almost everybody calls it acetylene. And it is used as a welding gas and has a very, very high heat of combustion. All right, next we've got CH2O. So CH2O. Here we actually have, remember it says, put the least electronegative element in the center. Well, we have a least electronegative element to work with, and that's hydrogen, except hydrogen can't go in the middle. So we're going to put carbon in the middle. So we'll put carbon, oxygen, and then we'll put both hydrogens attached to that carbon. Let's count up the valence electrons. So 1, 1, 4, and 6. That gives us 12. All right, so 1, 1, 4, and 6 gives us 12. For octet electrons, 2, 2, 8, and 8. That gives us 20. We don't have 20 electrons. We only have 12. So we'll take the difference. That gives us 8. Eight, uh, 8 shared electrons, and half of 8 is 4. So we have 4 bonds. Well, there's only one place to put the extra bond. You'll see that we've got 3 already. There's only one place to put that extra bond, and that's between carbon and oxygen. And if we come over here and look, 12 minus 8 gives us 4 electrons as lone pair electrons. So we have 2 lone pairs that we can put in. If you notice, carbon already has a full octet. We're going to have to go to the oxygen and give it lone pairs. So, so there, uh, oxygen has a full octet, carbon has a full octet, and each hydrogen has a bond. Now, again, this has a, an official name, and the official name is called methanol. Not to be confused with methanol. Methanol is uh, it's an alcohol, and if you drink it, um, you'll be poisoned. This is methanol, and if you drink it, you'll be poisoned more quickly. All right, methanol, but again, hardly anybody calls it methanol. Uh, it's more 
more uh, popular name, it's, it, and its uh, unofficial name is formaldehyde. So formaldehyde. Okay, so now let's look at the, look at this. We've got methanol. <laughs> So we just talked about methanol, uh, and this we've got methanol here. So CH3OH, this one has some structural clues. Um, when we have the hydrogen separated like this, it tells us, as far as the backbone structure, it tells us that well, we know that the carbon and oxygen have to be bonded to each other because carbon and oxygen do that. So carbon and oxygen, uh, or hydrogen can't be in the middle. And then the structural clue is that there's three hydrogens that are connected to the carbon. When you see the hydrogens like this, it tells us there's three hydrogens connected to the carbon and one hydrogen connected to the oxygen. So we'll put one there on the oxygen and we'll put three onto the carbon. Okay, so that gives us our backbone structure. Now let's count up the valence electrons. Carbon has four, oxygen has six, so four plus six is 10, and then one more for each hydrogen, that gives us 14 valence electrons to work with. For octet electrons, we have two, 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 and two for the hydrogen, so that's eight, and then eight and eight, that's 24 total. 24 minus 14 gives us 10 shared electrons, that's five bonds, if we look, We've already got one, two, three, four, five bonds already there. Okay, and then if we take the difference, uh, uh, we'll see how many electrons we have left. We've used up 10 of our 14. We have four electrons remaining that will be lone pair electrons. And those lone pair electrons are gonna go on to the oxygen. And as I mentioned a little bit earlier, this is called methanol. So this is an alcohol, not to be confused with ethanol, which is grain alcohol. And ethanol is the alcohol that is in alcoholic beverages. And it's also the alcohol that is uh, added to gasoline to help the gasoline uh, burn a little bit more cleanly. So there's an OH there. I didn't draw that very neatly. This one is ethanol. Um, so the difference here is that if you drink, if you drink, uh, ethanol, uh, it will make, it can make you sick because it is somewhat poisonous. It will make you drunk and will make you make bad decisions. If you drink methanol, it will also make you drunk, but drinking itself is the worst decision because it will also make you potentially blind and, uh, uh more importantly, dead. So methanol, bad stuff. Don't drink methanol. That's a good way to die. All right, so here we've got H2O2. That's called hydrogen peroxide. So hydrogen peroxide. So uh, the oxygens have to be bonded to each other. So there are the oxygens. And we're going to put a hydrogen on either side. All right, so we've got our backbone structure, and then here for uh, and then here for this we've got uh, uh, valence electrons. So one, six, six, and one, that gives us a total of fourteen. For octet electrons, we have two, eight, eight, and two, that gives us a total of twenty. Twenty minus fourteen gives us six shared electrons, and that should be three bonds. You'll notice we've already got three bonds. So one, two, three, we've already got the three bonds. So if we take the difference here, 14 minus six, that gives us eight electrons. So eight electrons, and we come over here, uh, we'll put four electrons onto, four electrons onto each oxygen. And as you may or may not be aware, I, I mentioned this a minute ago, this is hydrogen peroxide. So 
that is hydrogen peroxide. And you know, if you if you put a little nose right there, it kind of looks like somebody wearing glasses. And if you put a little mouth, you know, a little mouth there. And then if you put a little lightning bolt, it kind of looks like Harry Potter. All right, well, that's the uh, extent of my artistic ability. Uh, y you've seen all I got. All right, so on the next one, you already know what this is. This is called carbon monoxide. So let's do our backbone structure. That's step one, backbone, draw the backbone. Uh, count up valence electrons. So we've got uh, four for carbon and, and six for oxygen. Four plus six gives us 10 valence electrons to work with. For octet electrons, uh, if carbon could have eight and oxygen could have eight, that would be 16. 16 minus 10, that gives us six shared and three bonds. Well, clearly there's only one place to put those three bonds, and that's between the carbon and the oxygen. And you'll notice that we've got four electrons remaining as lone pair electrons. So four electrons remaining as lone pair electrons. So we're going to put uh, two of those electrons onto the oxygen and two of those electrons onto the carbon. And this is our valid Lewis structure for carbon monoxide. Now, there's something unusual about that structure with the way that it's drawn. And the thing that is unusual about that structure is uh, that carbon, all the carbons that we've seen so far have had four bonds going to them. And, all the, and, and no lone pairs. And all the oxygens that we've seen so far have had two bonds going to them and two lone pairs. Well, these are different. These are different. And to show how they're different, we're going to go to our next little topic here. And we're going to look at something that we call formal charges. Now, I've, I've uh, drawn the... Uh, the structure for carbon monoxide here. So I've got that structure. All right, the formal charge is the charge that the atom would have if every bond was shared equally. All right, now please note this is not the same thing as the actual charge, so it doesn't take into account like polar bonds and stuff like that. And it's not the same thing as the oxidation state because oxidation state is completely different. So this is formal charge, and you have to know how to do this calculation. It's really easy. It's really easy to do. So the first thing that you want to do when you're trying to determine formal charge for a particular atom is determine the number of valence electrons. We know carbon is in group four, so we'll put four valence electrons for carbon. That's the group number. All right. Uh, and then we're going to subtract the number of covalent bonds. And you'll see there's three covalent bonds, so we're going to subtract three from that four. And then we're going to subtract the number of non-bonding electrons. So subtract the number of non-bonding electrons, and that's two here on the carbon. So four minus three minus two gives us a negative one formal charge. So we're going to put a negative one up there on that carbon. Now I put it in red here to sort of highlight it, but you can just put it in, in whatever color ink you're using. We're going to do the same thing for oxygen. Oxygen is in group six, so it has six valence electrons. There's three bonds, so we're going to subtract the three bonds there. And we're going to subtract the number of non-bonding electrons too, so six minus three minus two, that gives us a positive one. So we're going to put the positive one on the oxygen there. All right, this is unusual, and uh, I am going to go back over here while I talk about how this is unusual. This is unusual because, and I'll go ahead and put it in red there, because it puts a negative charge on the less electronegative element and puts a positive charge on the more electronegative element, and, and that's quite unusual. And that lone pair of electrons that's on the carbon is part of the reason why carbon monoxide is so dangerous. Um, when you breathe in carbon monoxide, that lone pair of electrons on the carbon bonds very tightly to uh, the hemoglobin in your blood, and it prevents oxygen uh, from attaching to the hemoglobin. And anyway, uh, it, it makes you very sick and very dead if you get too much of it. So. 
All right, one quick note, and that is that the sum of all the formal charges must add up to the total charge on the species. So since carbon monoxide is neutral, positive one and negative one comes out to zero. But if we had a polyatomic ion, which we're gonna have some here in just a few minutes, uh, if we have a polyatomic ion, then we will find that it will, that polyatomic ion will have a, uh, um, whatever the charge on the ion is, then the sum of all our formal charges will add up to that. All right. Sometimes when we draw a Lewis structure, we can draw more than one possible Lewis structure. So for example, the carbon dioxide that we drew earlier looks like this. We could have drawn it so that there was just one bond going to oxygen and three bonds going to the other oxygen. And so we would have had this structure. So sometimes we can draw more than one valid Lewis structure. All right. If they're not equivalent, so these are not equivalent structures, one of them is better than the other, usually. And we call the one that's better the dominant Lewis structure. So it's our dominant structure. So the dominant Lewis structure we'll find is going to be the one in which the atoms bear formal charges closest to zero. You'll notice the formal charges on all of these atoms are all zero, whereas on this one we've got one that's positive one and one that's negative one. And so the one where they're all close to zero, that's usually better. And if there has to be a negative charge, sometimes there does, if there has to be a negative charge, then the dominant structure is going to put that negative charge on the more electronegative atom. So that's not what applies here, but on the next page you will see, uh, you will see how that applies. All right, so we're going to look at the dominant structure for these polyatomic ions. So which structure is the dominant Lewis structure for cyanate and thiocyanate? So here I've got uh, cyanate that is on the top. Cyanate is NCO minus. Total charge is minus one. And there's three structures that we can draw. One where we have the single bond between carbon and nitrogen and a triple bond between carbon and the other atom. In this case it's oxygen, in this case it's sulfur. And then we've got double bonds on both. And then here we've got a triple bond between carbon and nitrogen and a single bond between carbon and the other atom. All right, when we do the formal charges, so the formal charge on nitrogen on this left structure is going to be uh, negative 2 for both of those. And then we'll have positive 1 for oxygen and positive 1 for sulfur. Carbon is going to stay neutral. For, uh, for this second structure, uh, we're going to find that there's a negative 1 on the nitrogen, carbon still neutral, and then either oxygen or sulfur is going to be neutral. And then finally over here, we've got 0 on nitrogen, 0 on carbon, and negative 1 either on oxygen or sulfur. So what we want to do is we want to determine which one is the best structure. Well, for the cyanate, uh, this one, all right, for both of these, this one's not going to be a very good structure. Having a negative 2, uh, if we could avoid that and have closer to 0, then that's going to be better. So this is not going to be our best structure. And that means it's either the middle one or the third one. For, this, uh, for the cyanate, on this structure, we put the negative charge on, on nitrogen, but on this one, we put the negative charge on oxygen. Well, oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen. And so uh, that means that the N triple bond carbon single bond oxygen is going to be our better structure because it puts the negative charge on the oxygen, the more electronegative atom. For uh, the thiocyanate, we've got um, here we put the negative charge on nitrogen, and then on this one we put the negative charge on sulfur. Well, if we look at the electronegativities for nitrogen and sulfur, nitrogen is 3.0 and sulfur is 2.5. So nitrogen is more electronegative. That means this middle structure for thiocyanate is going to be better than the structure over here. So uh, our best structure for cyanate is the one on the right, and for thiocyanate it's the one in the middle. That's kind of interesting uh, because we had different atoms. All right, so we're now ready to talk about resonance structures. And we've already done some resonance structures. 
believe it or not, we have already done some resonant structures. Uh, we have called them dominant structures, but those are uh, um, where we had a, a dominant structure and a regular structure, and the you know the dominant structure is a resonant structure of the other one. So sometimes a molecule or ion can't be adequately represented by a single Lewis structure. And to illustrate this, we're going to go to number 42 on the in-class assignment and just do the very first thing, which is ozone. So we're going to come over here, and we're going to do ozone. All right, so which one goes in the middle? Well, they're all the same, so we're just going to put oxygen, oxygen, oxygen. So there's three oxygens uh, that are there. And then when we count the valence electrons, 6, 6, and 6, that's going to give us 18 valence electrons. For octet electrons, we're going to have 8, 8, and 8. Well, 8 times 3 is 24. All right, 24 minus 18 gives us 6. So that means that we should have three, uh, three bonds. So automatically, we look at this and we say, well, where should we put the extra bond should we put it here or here and we just have to pick one and so I'm going to arbitrarily put it right there so I'm going to arbitrarily put it there and then we come back over here uh, and we see we, so 18 minus 6 that gives us 12 electrons 12 lone pair electrons to work with let's start with the perimeter atoms first so this one can have one two three four five six all right so we put six there seven eight nine ten and we have to put 11, 12 there. And if we look, we'll see that uh, each of the oxygens has a full octet. So 2, 4, 6, 8. This one has 2, 4, 6, 8. And then 2, 4, 6, 8. So, and if you count the total electrons, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. We've used all 18 of our valence electrons. So now we just need to do uh, formal charge. So formal charge, we've got 6... Uh, minus two bonds, minus four lone pair electrons, that's zero. And then six minus three bonds, minus two lone pair electrons, that one's positive one, so there's a positive one there. And then this one is six minus one bond, minus six lone pair electrons, and that gives us negative one. So we have a positive one on this oxygen and a negative one on that oxygen. All right, so that is our Lewis structure. So I'm going to go back over here. All right, so the structure we get for ozone is this. Now, I've indicated the shape, and we're going to talk about shapes in Chapter 9. So the structure that we get for ozone, O3, has a double bond between uh, two oxygens and a single bond over on the other side. So you can see that we've got a double bond there and a single bond there. Well, this would suggest, uh, because... Uh, what we have found is that double bonds are usually shorter than single bonds. That would suggest that one bond should be shorter than the other. However, if we look at experimental data, um, those experimental data show that the bonds are identical in length. If we look, it's you know right at 1.278 angstroms, 1.278 angstroms. So even going out to the thousands place, there's no difference in the lengths between those bonds. That means that those two bonds should be identical. But... We can't draw it that way. So the way that we deal with this is that we draw something that we call a resonance structure. And the resonance structure just puts it the other way, where we put, instead of having the double bond on the left, we have the double bond on the right. Instead of having the negative charge on the right, we have the negative charge on the left. That, that, that takes care of it. And so that is a resonance structure. Now, which one is the true structure? Well, the answer is neither. The true structure is a combination of those two resonance structures. So we can draw what's called a hybrid structure. And uh, we do hybrid structures in organic all the time. Uh, uh, for this class, we're, we're, I'm just going to show, show you what it is, but you won't have to do a hybrid structure on your own. So each, each structure is equivalent in energy, and neither accurately represents the experimental data. And so we're going to find that if we take the average of the two structures, we get what is called a hybrid structure. And the hybrid structure, instead of having a double bond on one side and a single bond on the other, we're going to have about one and a half bonds on each side, so two equivalent bonds. Instead of having a negative charge on one oxygen and no charge on the other oxygen, 
we're going to have about a negative one half charge on each of those uh, perimeter oxygens. The one in the middle is still going to be positive because they're both positive there. So that is our hybrid structure. The only problem with the hybrid structure is that it's not really a valid Lewis structure. So hy hybrid structures are okay, but just keep in mind they're not actually valid Lewis structures. So we draw the valid we draw Lewis structures to represent those hybrids. All right, so let's look at uh, a resonance structure for benzene. So benzene C6H6 has two equivalent resonance structures that we can draw. And here are the two equivalent resonance structures. Um, and you'll see that uh, all that's happening is that the double bonds are moving around. Okay. Uh, when organic chemists draw this, they usually use um, skeletal structures. And skeletal structures are structures where we leave out carbons. We don't write down the carbons. The carbons are anytime you have two lines that come together, that represents a carbon. And also hydrogens are implied. Now, if you want to know how that works, just take organic chemistry and I'll, I'll get you set up on that. But the hydrogens are going to be implied on that carbon. So, uh, so this, is a, this is that structure. Sometimes you'll even see people uh, who, who this is just too much work uh, to draw the skeletal structure. And so instead, they'll just draw a hexagon with a circle in it. And that's fine for other people. Uh, I'm not going to draw those because uh, uh, because they are a little bit they're a little bit misleading as to what's going on. But it, indeed, you are getting a delocalized electrons. So you're getting delocalized electrons. It's just that uh, it's it's a little more complicated than that. So okay, so um, so those are the resonance structures uh, uh, for benzene. So let's look at sulfur trioxide and nitrate. All right, so. Some molecules like sulfur trioxide have more than two resonance structures. Uh, you can have three resonance structures for sulfur trioxide. And so here, if you draw the three resonance structures, uh, um, you'll get that. In fact, in a little bit, we're going to draw another resonance structure for sulfur trioxide that's even better than these three. But we're not, we're not ready to do that yet because we haven't gotten to the exceptions yet. But soon enough, we will do that. All right, we can have multiple resonance structures for polyatomic ions as well. So we can have multiple structures for polyatomic ions. Here is the uh, here are the three resonance structures for nitrate. All right, and you'll notice it's just a matter of moving uh, moving the pi bonds around. We're going to practice doing that here in just a moment. So we just have to make sure that the sum of all of the formal charges comes out to the total charge. Okay, so let's go over to number 42, and we've already done one of the ones on 42. So we did this, uh, and then there's a, an additional resonance structure that's over there. So I'm going to put, you know, plus resonance structure. Okay, so here we've got carbonate. So that is carbonate. All right, so for carbonate, we're going to put carbon in the middle because it's the least electronegative. All right, so we'll have three oxygens around the central carbon atom. Let's count up valence electrons. So we have 6, 6, and 6. That's 18. And then four more for the carbon. That's 22. However, you'll notice that there's a negative 2 charge. And if we come back over here, it's a uh, plus one for each negative charge, and then subtract one for each positive charge. So uh, since we have a negative two charge, we're going to add two electrons. So 22 plus two gives us 24 valence electrons. So 24 valence electrons. All right, so now for uh, octet electrons, eight, 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 and eight. So eight times four comes out to 32. Well, 32 minus 24 gives us 8. And 8 shared electrons means 4 bonds. All right, so that means 4 bonds. All right, so we just, we've got a place, three places for bonds, so we have to put the other bond somewhere, and I'm going to arbitrarily put it here. 
but we know that we could have put it here and here. So, um, so that gives us that. And then 24 minus 8, that gives us 16 electrons remaining as lone pair electrons. So let's start feeding these oxygen. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And so now if you count up all those electrons, we've got 24 valence electrons. And we've got eight shared in the four bonds and 16 lone pair electrons. So we've got, we've got our structure. Let's go ahead and do the formal charge. Carbon, uh, carbon is four minus four bonds minus no lone pairs. That's zero. That oxygen is zero. You just have to trust me on that one. This oxygen is uh, six minus one bond minus six lone pair electrons. That gives us negative one. So there's a negative one there and a negative one there. All right, we could draw two additional resonance structures, one where the double bond's here and one where the double bond is there. And I'm going to go ahead and draw those. And then that's going to give us a negative charge there and there. And then we'll do one more. And that will give us a negative charge there and there. All right, so those are the three structure, three resonance structures for carbonate. You'll have to know how many resonance structures there are. And often it's just if you have a double bond, how many different places can you move the double bond? That's how many total structures you're going to have. Okay, so here we've got uh, nitrite. So nitrogen's going to go in the middle, and again, I'm going to do a little bit of foreshadowing here. So nitrogen, oxygen, nitrogen. Um, as far as the number of valence electrons, uh, 6, 6, and 5. So 6 plus 6 is 12, plus 5 more is 17, but we've got a negative 1 charge, so 18 valence electrons. For octet electrons, 8, 8, and 8, that gives us 24. 24 minus 18 gives us 6, and that's 3 bonds. So this is a lot like what we saw with ozone a little bit ago. So we're going to have a double bond there between uh, one of these, and we'll, we'll already know that we can draw a resonance structure where we put the double bond on the other side. All right, we've used 6 out of 18. That means we have 12 electrons remaining. So we'll do 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. All right, and now uh, as far as formal charges, um, this one's 0, so I'm not going to do it. Uh, nitrogen is 5 minus 3 bonds minus 2 lone pairs, so that one's 0. And then this oxygen is 6 minus 1 minus 6, so this one's negative 1. We've done that one before, but 6 minus 1 minus 6 is negative 1. All right, so there's a negative 1 there. And that makes sense because the total charge is negative 1, and we only have the 1 charge. So let's put in the remaining electrons on this one. And we'll put a negative 1 there. So there are two total resonance structures for nitrite. So two resonance structures for nitrite. Now, we already did, uh, I already showed you sulfur trioxide um, over here on this page, right? It's right there. But uh, I just want to go through the math real quick just so you, you can see how this works. Sulfur, of course, goes in the middle. All right, so sulfur goes in the middle. Uh, 6, 6, 6, and 6. So 6, 6, 6, and 6 comes out to 24. And then 8, 8, 8, and 8 comes out to 32. 32 minus 24 is 8. That's 4 bonds. 
And so, all right, where does the extra electron go or extra bond go? It doesn't really matter because we can draw two more structures. And then we've got uh, 24 minus 8, that's 16 electrons remaining. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. All right. These dots are getting a little bit messy, but you'll, you'll have to forgive me there. All right, and, and just look at formal charges real quick. We already know this oxygen's negative 1 and this oxygen's negative 1. And if we look at that sulfur, on that sulfur we're going to get uh, group 6 minus 4 bonds minus no lone pairs, positive 2. Positive 2. And the reason I mention this is, oh, I just hit my camera there. Sorry about that. Uh, the reason I mention this is that uh, sulfur, I mean, sulfur certainly can take a positive 2 charge, but that is that is uh, kind of unusual. It's kind of unusual to have such a big charge. A little bit later, I'm going to show you a way that we can we can deal with that. So we already know that there's two, there's two additional resonance structures. We already know there's two additional resonance structures. All right, so we're already at 51 minutes on this, so I am going to go, let me check this out. All right, so before we do exceptions to the octet rule, I'm going to uh, uh, stop this video, and on the third video, we will start the exceptions to the octet rule.